Yo, what it do, guys, and welcome back to another Warframe video. Uh, this one's going to be covering what we just saw, Deviri Paradox, coming out April 2023 for us. It's just next month, and there is a lot to cover. This looks absolutely stacked. Now, to start off with, I'm just going to go and give you guys my entire reaction to what we saw and how we saw it together. So first, we're going to go and see my reaction. After that, I'm going to go and give you guys some thoughts and opinions just briefly. And I want to go and hear what you guys think as well. So without further ado, enjoy the video and there will be timestamps added beneath. So feel free to skip to whatever you guys want to go and skip to. I'll see you guys in a bit. <laughs> right. So we're going to do this multiplayer. Megan is going to be hosting the session. I'm going to be joining as a client and I'll right, just chat. You ready? The very paradox. Let's Pause talk. jump. Let's take a look first. <laughs> then we'll talk. Okay. So where are we? We are in a place Angels that is Simon, like, uh, right. sacred to the Tenno and sacred so and the ten zero. horrifying. Oh, uh, is this going to be the other door that, that, that we go into? To the door by the war. swords. Yeah, and we're doing it. Perhaps, we're doing it. Uh, you know, players We're doing it live. The angels of the Zeremen will know a little bit more about this place. We're doing it live. Of course, the Zeremen. And let's just go through, Meg. Why don't we take a look? Walk through. I, I just moved in. Please don't judge my decorations. It's too late. All right. Sorry. Yeah, so if you don't know, the Zeremen <laughs> is a spot that going is in here? critical to a lot of the story and the lore of our characters. And the Deviri Paradox, in many ways, if you've played the New War, seems to orient from here in some way. Could be the other door. Beautiful colonist ship that, you know, had its very terrible accident. I guess we're just showing people who have, haven't said this, now, but I, this, I think, oh, uh, it's open. The Paradox will kick off with you meeting some people, hopefully, that you'll know and love. My maggot opened the door. <laughs> Go on in, maggot. <laughs> the maggot <laughs> opened so the door, look at something. that. Go on in. Uh, so Spoilers. So this time this door is officially gonna oh. be open for people. Yes. Yes. Thanks to the maggot. Thanks, Thanks to the to maggot. maggot. <laughs> All you needed was a maggot. It's true. Yeah. What about that sentence? Sheesh. Let's see what happens next. So, that is Akrithis. She is a character that will be very important to your progress in Deviri. She's quite the curious soul. And the Deviri Paradox is going to be something you can access through your Dorma Zone, or you can just do it through the Star Chart. We're just doing it the flavor way, because, you know, mm. doors are important to go through. Doors are very doors important. Are very important. That no other game does. So you turn to the right. <gasps> oh, yeah? The mirror? A mirror! Oh. Wow. Wow, look at that! Oh, oh, I wow. just got Arsenal on it. Wow. Mirror is very exciting. That is actually the biggest tech. That's actually kind of cool, though, but it does look good. <laughs> I like the Arsenal on the mirror. That's actually pretty clever. That's actually cool. A lot, and she will be giving you a lot of information about Deviri for the lore hounds and, um, you know, some items as well. But we won't go too much into that today. Why don't we actually just go into Deviri? I think we should. I can't yes. wait. Oh, what? Welcome oh. to the Deviri Paradox. This is a open world that lives in its own part of Warframe, uh, but of course it will connect. And what you'll find is you are playing through the moods of Dominus Thrax. He is this sort of king, emperor, overlord figure for Duviri. And every two hours, his mood changes. Not the joy spiral right now. <laughs> yeah, right now he's in the joy choice. spiral. <laughs> so we're going to play through the Duviri experience. And when Duviri launches, of course, you'll be playing the quest. And then once you're done the quest, you'll get to this screen. And there's three ways to play Duviri. One is the circuit, which is endless Warframe only mode. Uh, this is a mode that will take you through different, you know, it'll make sense once we're done <laughs> doing the normal playthrough. But this is for people that just really want to play the Warframe mode, get some rewards that connect to the bigger picture of Warframe, which we'll talk right. about after. But that's all going to be done in the circuit. Then there's the lone story. This is for people that maybe don't want to do things like fishing or our version of conservation, which you'll see. But this is for people that just want to go through the joy spiral to get their, you know, daily reward. Uh, they won't be match made. This is really for matchmaking. It's for people that don't want to match make with someone that's going to go off and, you know, smell the roses, so to speak. Do side activities. Yeah, I hate other people. Of yeah. Those types of things wouldn't spawn here. This is for people that are solely in uh, that, you know, get her done yeah. state of mind. And then, of course, the Devere experience, which is how we intend the day to perhaps unfold where someone can be oh. match made and experience all Devere has to offer. You can play side activities. I'm going to need a team. Or the open world. And you can spend your time being distracted, really, <laughs> and, and, and getting yourself uh, geared up for the perhaps the boss fight at the end. Yeah, so perhaps so the boss fight at the end. Open world, but it is oh, quite different from our other open worlds. Oh, never. Um, for starters, uh, the structures of those are generally more like you go in and just can do random stuff in here. This is a little more guided. There's like a story that you go in. Um, 
that gets um, generated um, every time you, you go and play it. It changes with the moods, it changes. Uh, honestly, we like, for us, it's almost a surprise. We were surprised literally half an hour before the stream, like, like, oh, look at that. That's what yeah. we're going to have for the demo. Yeah. So, we didn't know. yeah so. so we're just going to jump on in and take a look at the Devere experience. And I want to make sure that players understand the mood timers is for flavor and diversity. Uh, we're not locking you out of something that you can only do in anger for like a mm -hmm. daily reward. Mm -hmm. This is flavor, emotion, mood, mm -hmm. the world. So yeah. we're going to hop into joy. Chat, let's see your reaction as well. I want you guys to go ahead and react with me here, OK? The sound is actually different for each of the moods as well. Absolutely. The, the sound team's done an incredible job in capturing the different emotions and the soundscapes as you enter. We've got different music <laughs> for different <laughs> moods, different, different audio ambience for different moods. So everything really feels different every time you go into another mood. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're really excited about it. Yeah, and each, uh, yeah, you'll meet characters. Uh, today we're going to do just us narrating, but you will meet characters that uh, hopefully you'll fall in love with as well. So I know I have. So let's hop into right. the experience and I'll walk you through the gameplay that we're about to Very do. Very landscape Dragon. happy. Keep in mind, this is going to be happy. So we don't know what the others know. are, anger and so forth. We're driving this bus. The very <laughs> paradox <laughs> aroused. Oh. What? So this open now world I'm aroused. doesn't have a town. This Hold open on. world has a sanctuary starting point, which is where you determine how you're going to play the Debiri Paradox that game. This is very different, Tenno. This is unlike any other open world, truly. Uh, but it is. Could you imagine a new player like starting this like this? Look at the health. All of that's that different. I'll move my camera. Look at the is safe here. Soriko abilities, here. one decree. And as we walk through, we're going to be presented with our sort of roguelite loadout options for our daily mood. So we're going to play the Joy Spiral. Oh my and goodness. Megan and I are going to have to decide our loadouts. So Megan, as you can see, has five Warframes. Warframe to primary. What is the Hildren Prime, which we wow. did not plan? Hildren Prime's uh, in there. So Mirage Prime. Megan Stalker? Stalker? Yeah, it's, it's, just yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's important to know that my current character, I'm maxed out in what I'm about to show you. We have Teshin, of course. Teshin's Cave is a pivotal point. Pivotal person in the story, and then we have our Drift. drifter intrinsic. Oh, we've got more intrinsics. So Combat riding really opportunity intrinsics. Ooh, rogue -like, rogue -like this ideas. And for us in Warframe, we thought we could take what we know about intrinsics, but actually turn them into persistent progression. This is to do with the leak that kind of happened a while so ago. Five Warframes to pick from. But so the leak was kind of the theory, leak was basically accurate. From. And then as you're progressing, you can like why. I don't know if the values are accurate, the but the leak was accurate. By using Drifter Intrinsics. So this is a way to persistently progress in all things you give yourself more survivability, give yourself more oh, Look at that gameplay. Oh, sorry, I just saw the gameplay. Basis. And the biggest one really is opportunity. So if you go back over to this one, this is where the roguelike angle comes live. Um, and of course, uh, this is where we'll talk a little bit about, you know, combat and stuff once we go out there. How could we keep the experience uh, fresh every time, you know, and we were leaning really a lot on those uh, roguelike elements. Uh, you guys saw on the demo for Tenocon, uh, we showed the, the decrease there, you know, different uh, upgrades that you could select. So this over here, the intrinsics are like the meta progression that you can do across runs and the the decrees are the, the progression you can do within one run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Megan, if you want to go out and take a look at, uh, you know, okay. like one of the biggest uh, let's have a little look then. is, of course, uh, riding. So let's take so a this look is at the Royal Cave. Uh, this is something that allows the drifter to move on Duviri very quickly. Troopers. Customized cave, there you go, there, there it is. The cave sleeve. So let's uh, take a look at do your... Do a little classic customization. See what you like. Oh, oh, yeah. It's beautiful. I like the uh, Syacus one. So do I. Yeah. I'm a fan of the... I don't, I, I don't hate it, I'll be honest. I, 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 I don't hate it. I want I a mean, death horse. The horns. The horns are so Oh, good. So the, yeah, that's... The, uh, so the Shamfrons are coming. These are all going to be customizations available for any, you know... Do I have to form a cave? Would like to <laughs> sure. My favorite's this one because it looks like a... The real question. Mm. Do it. Santa time. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, I like the different tail options as well. <laughs> There's something that I gigantic. 
the Itigo they go, one. Yeah, there's the, the, the Itigo one, yeah. Oh, damn, that yeah, tail actually looks pretty clean. Detail. You can name your cave. This is unlocked. Oh my goodness, well. I can I finally write chat. Sorry, what? What did you say? What? Spot what? chat? What do you got for? I think that's got to be oh, yeah. the thing. That's a chat thing. That's a yeah. chat thing. That's chat. a chat thing. Chat. Every single one of you, you've agreed to this. It's a binding contract. If you do not call your cave Clark by the time that we've started the very paradox, you're banned permanently. I want to see as many Clarks as I can be ridden. Yeah. It's got to be Roach. What? Yeah. Listen. I need love. Of course. Yeah. Color. Oh. It's been it's been lonely lately. All right. I just. I, I, Oh my god, that's so attachment. Yeah. I gotta say though, like the, the headgear really takes the whole edge lord vibe. Right <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> what are you trying to say? Yeah. What's the issue, Gary? Sorry, Roach. Roach is one. <laughs> so that is my horse for uh, for right now. Yeah, so I want you guys to picture Duviri as every time you start, you're gonna be in this sanctuary this with Teshin, and you're gonna be planning your loadout for your adventure that awaits you. I like so the look of this area, by the way. Very cool. Spiral rolls in. Uh, oh, oh, those are the plants. Pick new gear. So we're in the Joy Spiral. So we'll we know of the Angel Zaraman plants, the and then there's a mirror there. You know, you can customize your Drifter because this is the Duviri paradox. The Drifter is here, and they're playing things out, perhaps with you know, as the quest will resolve with help from the other side. Uh, and then so we do different. have some expansion plans here. Megan just walked past a little gardening area that will be coming um, post-release. But uh, post -release. because we're in the Drifter's elements, the Drifter is able to do something that players have requested for a long time, which is Drifter Melee. Uh, and they're going to be able to pick from a variety of stances. These stances will be ways, you'll unlock these with progression. Uh, so you'll start off with the sun and moon that you get from the quest, and then you'll be able to earn um, the rest of your melee stances. So Megan's gonna go with a two. I'm a big, big yeah. hammer kind big of Big hammer. So, you know, you can smack the dummy a little if you want. <laughs> Show the dummy. Idiot, what an idiot. <laughs> He so. has the worst job in Warframe. <laughs> 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 <What a dummy. laughs> poor, poor dummy. And now we get to pick our loadout. So this is sort of that. And there will be, you know, I'm not going to... Ah, the Mayan colors. Oh, you can see them yeah. <laughs> yeah. What can I say, you know? Yeah. Why don't we hover Very over that mysterious figure on the right there? Oh, I'd this, be curious what it says. An ally from an unknown time and place. Hmm. Mm. Duviri is quite strange. I don't know. Maybe we should let the players... We'll yeah, don't yeah, them. don't touch Stalker because you know I'd love to play though. My ch I, my chat are mostly fate, stalkers, so I feel like they'll play does, that. They blessed us. Mm -hmm. Fate has blessed us. This is like you like you said, every time like this round is these these warframes mm -hmm. and then it kind of resets and as well as you can tell, <laughs> some of these are my very specific warframes. Yeah. Can you play as Vor? If I don't own a warframe, it will also let me borrow that warframe for the session <laughs> if I want to try it out. Yeah, so we just are going to talk people to death. We're going to say that Duviri is essentially trans. Look at them. Uh, the Drifter, the Void, they come here with the Spiral. Nerdy. All of these things mean that the choices you make affect that gameplay session only. It's a run you're doing. So you don't need to. If you don't own something, we will offer you loaners, we'll offer you loaner mods. Uh, but if you have gear, and say I have my Valkyr Prime, for instance, you know, I have several Umbra Former in her, I get that version of her. Uh, mm -hmm. So that will that will be what I choose. Mm. Uh, Megan, you're going to pick Hildred. I, I can't imagine you wouldn't. Oh, damn, that was a very quick, and clean and transition. The, and then the guns? Mm -hmm. And because I am max strength, uh, my Drifter Intrinsic, I have Harris, four options Ignis for Rafe. my weapons. You unlock them as you continue through your Drifter Intrinsic. Right, OK. The, the Warframes as well. Uh, and work your way up from there. I'm just gonna see what speaks to me. Yeah. <laughs> I love that it helps to do the demo the fact that they have your color so that yeah, they kind of explains. <laughs> yeah. They know exactly that, that I own that one. <laughs> that one is mine. So, yeah, now before we go out, I want to explain the decree system. And this is sort of the core pillar of this open world expansion. I think you can influence fact, like this. I'm going to talk about it later. So because I'll Megan talk about and I are max rank characters, we start in Teshin's cave with a decree to choose. And this is when we're going to start building our run loadout. So Megan, if you hit Q, let's take a look at some of your options. So Megan gets to pick her first decree, which is going to be her first choice for Stand her build. And as we play and do the daily adventure, we're going to get more of these. So by the end, we could have up to 10, 15, must, just so crazy upgrades freeze. that only exist for that session. Mm -hmm. So for instance, uh, taking damage, uh, regenerate 15 energy per second, deal 30% damage to enemies affected by freeze status. Stun and performance could be nuts with like every enemy affected by a status. Sarah's thing. Oh, you can reroll them as well. 
Reroll it. No, reroll it. Start off strong. Yeah. And I'll pick uh, mine as well, just because you guys can't see my screen. Oh, I got Vicious Barb. Critical damage is doubled. So they're kind of all over the place. And You got a rare. I did get a rare. I mean, it is what it is. Okay. It is what it is. Oh my Today's god. The adventure that we're playing is the Harbinger. Harbinger? Harbinger. 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 Yo! That's the Mexican guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I don't know. So we are out in the open world of Duviri. We are in the Joy Spiral, which Holy is the art team for the sound team. Shit. It's a happy place. Oh, yes, and that is quite high. Yeah, if you guys remember that looks the, incredible. The demo, that one, like the, at the end, the sky goes red and there's meteors coming from. So that's anger. Yeah, and you no can put angry that in face contrast. in the sky here. Yeah, yeah this if, is. If you contrast that with joy, basically. It actually uh, looks genuinely incredible. Sounds, different soundscape, di different visuals, uh, enemies change. Look at that skybox. There's. Um, the, 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 it's important to us that it just feels different whenever you're playing one mm -hmm. of those. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really like, uh, you know, the kind of leaning on that roguelike vibe is, you know, the world changes every two hours and every time you play. <laughs> this is very different from the trailer that we might, got years ago. <laughs> Loner mods so you can pick this is so bright. Well, you get a variety of weapons and then you get um, mood, the right? Increase on top. So, hopefully, that can make it so that you know it feels buried every time you play. Yes, and uh, we'll start our adventure. We're gonna start it. What a way to start. Let's go. Oh, I'm gonna find so many ways to break so this. So, here we are going through uh, the, the beautiful world that the team has created. Carrie, we stage have one of world four. Islands. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting thing to, to try to pull off for us. It's good to have a flying horse at that point. Yes. So, yeah, it's, uh, How do I explain Warframe to anyone? It's, it's the amount of teamwork that is involved in doing this is like, kind of, it breaks your brain when you're actually looking at it in a big moment. Like a new this. player can take this option. Like, wow, you would have to thank... Just a so new player can frame. take this <laughs> option. Yeah, every frame has uh, the authors and the pixels, so... Uh, so we're gonna do our adventure. Uh, we're gonna do it's varying types of things, side activities, combats, and we'll just run through them right now. See what we can do. Whoa. What we're gonna look through now is basically one of the, the stories. Normally, if you're playing like the full experience, you could also be walking around and then you see something to the side that attracts your eye, and then you can go and do it if you want to. So it's uh, it does have the vibe. But one of the things we really wanted to kind of address from other open worlds that we've done is generally on those often you get like objectives that are really spread apart. I don't know so what I'm looking like, at anymore. Uh, you have to go uh, 600 meters that way and it's just kind of a, a board to just have to travel a ton. So in this when it generates the dynamic. What are those enemies? The game, They're like shadows. It, it localizes kind of your little track so that you have a, a story that's close by and you can just kind of go from one thing to the other and finding things along the way. Degree. And every day we put you on different spots of the islands. The islands are really big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we don't want you to go through the same place every time. So uh, different moments you go to different places and so on. Oh. So, so Megan and I, I just finished our first objective. We get to pick our decree uh, mm. so sh we can continue Crouched. making our build for the day. Shields. Melee right kills. There you go. Killer's confidence. Enemies within 10 meters become yep. slowed as well. <laughs> Depends on the percentage. It doesn't You're say percentages of like well. slow. All right. I wouldn't so mind we'll percentages. Go to our next uh, Harbinger of Joy story, and this is something narratively that we're trying really differently as well. We're gonna have procedural narration for this, so that's right. Yeah, you'll take. You didn't want to spoil too many characters and get things going. Uh, we also have to do some work to set them up, but uh, you'll. Uh, God, that's beautiful. You'll get to meet who the Harbinger of Joy is. So yeah, we can just explore beautiful. Divirri. If you watch Tenokan, you'll kind of recognize the statues, maybe. Um, providing a little bit of healing if you need it while you're yep. out here in the Divirri Paradox. Yeah, we don't know how much we want to, you know, how difficult we want to make it, but we're, we're balancing that out. But oh, know, make it as difficult as possible. Here. Make it the hardest thing you've you ever done. Here, someone's holding your hand. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's right. So make it absolutely make impossible. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, New players join and they're like, the "What the hell? I can't even progress." Frax Gladius. That is part of. Who the, the hell is that? For the course, basically, you get like a nice little tool to engage. Um, and then the combat for this, at least for like the drifter part, and again, you, uh, is, is more of a, it's a different combat. We, we didn't want to just like repeat the same things that you do with a Warframe. You'll see Warframe combat in a moment, but uh, for the drifter himself, it's, it's uh, more of a melee focused thing. 
you know, it's smaller, smaller tire groups. Uh, it's about getting those parries correctly. Ooh, kneecapping that poor guy. <laughs> I don't know what he did to you. It sucks to be that tall, you know? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, there's still quite a bit to, you know, uh, you'll, I don't know, think we've shown this enemy before. No, we haven't. Uh, the, the heavy Everybody guy. haven't seen this one. Ooh, he's heavy, but he's mobile, you know? He, he has a... Uh, um, oh, man, got him. Was. Perish. Lamentus. Isn't that Gallium? Once you kill them... Uh, is that not just Gallium? That looked exactly like Gallium. Am I am I wrong with that? Oh, are you open a chest like that? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, Destiny. Ooh. Fifty percent uh, damage for oh, every enemy effect. Status effects, effect. triple damage. Status effects, triple da da tri No, oh, let me read the rest. Ah. Barb. Yeah, the, the re resource icons are placeholder, but uh. Number yeah. shared affinity was so in the top right there. Yeah, mm. there's a lot. Yeah, like you said, it's just making that power level insane. By the time you've collected. Mm -hmm. A dozen decrees. There's one, I gotta say, it's the one where the more decrees you have, the faster your drifter goes. Yeah. I'm sprinting across that degree. I'm so fast. It makes me laugh. I love it. It's just, it's fun. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty wild. And of course, uh, open worlds and Warframe do benefit from lots of side activities, least true, of all true. fishing. And we wanted to kind of reinvent fishing for the Deviri Paradox, so Megan is gonna do the honors of- Fishing? Maybe people that have played the War Within have a little bit of love in their heart for a certain mechanic that we thought we could turn into a pretty awesome fishing game. Uh, so let's see what war we with, It's been so long since I've done War Within. What, what right, mechanic? Now my first rodeo. Let's see how it goes. Start more fishing. fishing. What could that possibly? It's more a bit fishing. of a different take on fishing. It's a different take on fishing. <laughs> Is it like barbarian kind of fishing? It's spear fish. How do you feel about mowing fish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What if you could eat? The how fish? do I explain <laughs> Warframe to anybody? How do I explain so this, this game? Example of, you know, a yeah, you can play as a Warframe. You can play as some child. Like, you can play as some old so dude. Oh, by the uh, way, you can play as a fucking fish. Be able to come do this. Uh, for instance, you know, I would love to fish with Pablo, but maybe I'm in a rush that day and I don't want to match make with people. Can, don't can, you, can I replace the model of this with Grendel? Uh, Wouldn't it be more thematically or, uh, accurate? Or and just have him going around chomping on fish? What is happening? Something different with this. Really happy with how it turned out. The team's worked really hard on this sort of weird fishing mini game that isn't quite spear fishing. This is so bizarre. I mean, and it seems like it scales on the loot, like at the top part there. Didn't get. You know, I'm not going to spoil too much, but the Drifter is a different character than the Tenno. So things are different for the Drifter. The Drifter never got focus schools and all those things. This is a different character, but you'll see how it all comes together as we continue our adventure. Good job, Meg. Did oh you get it, Pablo? <laughs> <laughs> he was judging me earlier. Yeah. Come on. So I was able to He's get it. He's going to have a great answer. Ground slams and then take a damage return. Okay, so you get listeners with Sim before. Fleet Foot sounds pretty good. What, what? Oh, Every oh, day. Oh, 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 oh my god. god. Oh, baby. We're moving. We are moving. We must have eaten our turtles today. All right, so let's. Yeah, continue. I would take fleet footed personally. I just, I think that, that movement utility is and just too good fishing, to not have. You get fish parts as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Resources from the fish that you do yeah. maw on. Uh, yeah, the Reb also mentioned conservation is not conservation as you know it. You'll see in the video. So. Oh, we do. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Okay, yeah, I, I thought she glitched out. <laughs> we went a little crazy. It's yeah. all new. Like it really, we're, <laughs> but it there's, all no yeah, there's no mining. There's no mining. There's no mining. There's, there's no mining. There's no bounties in the truest sense. It's stories that take you through. Um, I'm okay that there's no bounties. So that doesn't bother me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. <clears throat> Megan uh, is flying around. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I wouldn't mind some like airborne enemies to fight as well. Perhaps a different place in Dubai. You know? Something like that. Oh, stuck the landing. Nice. Wow, Meg. Mm. What can I say? Wheels down, baby. I love those thin <laughs> little uh, bridges. Yeah. yeah. They're fun to hit. <laughs> They're like almost the things that we're often forbidden from using because you need more space to fight and stuff like yes. that. Yes. But it's nice to have. Right, like, thanks a for the subs. Sorry, I'll catch up with you guys at the end. All right, so Dominus Thrax as a character only has so much control over Duviri, and we're about to go mm. to a place where your power can be helped from the other side. So welcome to the Undercroft. Let's go in there. The Undercroft. I'm, so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sprinting. Uh, the decrees apply both to the Warframe and the, the Drifter. Some of them are not as effective on the Drifter. For example, uh, earlier we got one for shields, the Drifter doesn't have shields, but um, you know they, they, the Drifter gets other benefits just from getting a boon. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
Boons really start going. Like, sorry, the, the, the crews really start going a little naughty once you get to the Warframe. Yeah, and this right now we're in the space between space. We're about mm -hmm. to enter something we call the Undercroft. Which ten ten rounds. You'll recognize a lot oh. of what we're about to do. Oh, no. Oh, Wait. So these are Warframe combat arenas. These are spaces where you have to do objectives would... in the Undercroft to keep Daviri essentially safe from Thrax's control. Yeah, this is the more traditional flavor of Warframe, if you will. It's essentially uh, the game modes that you know. In this case, you, you're, we're playing five minutes survival uh, in this new Talset. And you're a five minutes survival? Going in and out from the open world of Daviri into this. Uh, all your boon supply and then out. Oh god, but I'm not going to have my uh, OP guns. Earlier <laughs> we were talking about uh, the circuit. The circuit is essentially a sequence of these ones. So This is a very small playing, area by the map. Uh, survival, so this survival, 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 survival. It will be five minutes of survival. And once that's done, you'll go into like uh, defense. Five ways of and defense. And then you'll go into a, a void flood. And it will kind of cycle through those. And you'll keep on getting decreased and you'll keep on getting nuttier and nuttier. So it's changing we're endurance gonna, missions. Because, um, we want to okay. get this without keeping people here too. Over time, we're just going to push the survival along just so people can uh, get a feel for the rest know, of the like, and then we can... Uh, you guys know survival. You guys know survival. <laughs> Been there, come on. <laughs> But do we know defense? <laughs> That's a t-shirt if I ever heard. <laughs> uh, the other differences, and we're not really showing it here, but there are new enemies, <laughs> new enemies in here um, that are they were from the stuff that you've seen in Dubiri itself. I'm fine with new enemies. You'll have new, new things to encounter as, um, as your warframe. Flashbang. So that and was called the Undercroft. You uh, you'll get another Greedy boon, Hill. We'll get Greedy Hill sounds good. Critical also sounds good. So Rise in Agony. Spiral, finish the spiral, and then be sort of on our way for all things. Uh, yeah. You know, Duviri. And here we are looking out upon the Joy Spiral, the Duviri Paradox. Now we need shrine fragments. Oh my god, dude. Bro. And of Bra. course, as you progress, one brother. of the progressions Bruv. Be bursts of step brother. What are you doing? Connecting to the other side that you can actually bring your Warframe onto Dubiri with you. So these are going to be tactical bite sized bursts where, say, you come across one of those big heavy enemies and you've done just enough damage that you can actually summon your Warframe to you. So it's going to uh, Very pretty. be something you can play towards, start strategically bringing your Warframe to Dubiri and. Uh, That'll be uh, that'll be the Devere paradox in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. So a little slice. Right, oh then. And there we have it. We have just had our first well, not really our first look at the Viri Paradox. This is gonna be our I don't even know how many looks we've actually had at it, but this is definitely the most interesting look and probably one of the most in-depth looks that we've had of it besides from the Tanacon uh, reaction and the Tanacon reveal. So I'm just going to go and pick out some particular spots here and some particular subjects uh, and just my quick thoughts and opinions about them. And again, please go and share what you guys go and think because uh, the more sample size of this, the better. I can't wait to go ahead and cover everything and anything Daviri Paradox. So if you guys are not yet subscribed to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. So without further ado, let's go and jump into it even further. So start off with choice now i thought this one was interesting to hear how it's going to be split down the middle law wise this makes sense and i'm not a big law advocate when it comes to warframe but law wise i get it i do understand that this is supposed to take events before the new war and this is all supposed to be happening with everything that we've been doing throughout warframe so as we were doing this drifter was doing that but to hear that a new player can jump into this game i do have to go ahead and and it makes me ponder, how do you even begin to explain this game to a new player? That's going to be very, very interesting. I also feel like, and not in a negative way, but one of my biggest experiences with Warframe, or one of my most uh, impactful experiences with Warframe, was when I started the game, I would always say, oh, I like the movement, and I like the jumping and shooty, this is fun. Um, but I'm confused about everything else. And I still remain confused up until I got to a quest called The Second Dream. You might see where I'm going with this. If a new player is to go ahead and experience this game now and doesn't really go ahead and have the option to do Second Dream, I feel like it's a little bit less impactful. At least from my experience, maybe this is a biased topic, but Second Dream to me really opened up the game. 
I didn't understand it in the first place, and then I didn't understand it even further. It left me with a lot of questions, but it opened up gameplay-wise, and it opened up a, a different way to look at the game. Now, this was years ago since I last played Second Dream and War Within, um, but my opinion hasn't really changed since then. It was phenomenal, that experience, and it gave me a completely different outlook. Warframe has many identities. Um, solely mixed into you can play as robots you can play as uh, these ninja frames space frames you could play as was it young adults and whatnot and uh, you could ride k drives and float around and get on like flying arc wings and there's so many different like combinations within the game not even to include railjack and so forth and not even to include the new fish in minigame which we'll go over in a minute but I am definitely, definitely curious to go and see how new player experiences will react. So I'm, I'm genuinely curious how much this is going to change and influence the player base of newer players coming into Warframe. This to, this to me is fascinating, generally fascinating. Now, moving on to some of the gameplay loop and just some of the uh, reaction towards it. We saw the Zaraman. We're inside the Zaraman 10. Uh, then we also saw that we went through the doors with the swords that we had noticed beforehand. We went up towards the mirror. By the way, that mirror uh, scene that we saw there where you could go and access the arsenal in the mirror. Just going to say, whoever came up with that, that was awesome. That looked really, really cool. So well done there. Uh, after the mirror, we then went into this new area and you can go ahead and start seeing what, what warframes could you go and select your customization, what weapons you could go and get. Seems to be randomized loadouts at that point. It is going to be nice because it can spice it up a little bit. You've got to keep in mind, sometimes you're going to have good runs and sometimes you might even have bad runs. So it's going to be very, very randomized going into this. There's good and bad to that, but the good thing, at least for me, as someone who's been playing Warframe for a long time, it's been over six years now, I can tell you that to me, this looks quite refreshing. That is a word that definitely needs to be prioritized and definitely uh, focused on as we approach the very, uh, <laughs> I'm stuttering, sorry, as we approach the very Paradox gameplay. That is gonna look awesome. And to feel that refreshing gameplay loop, I'm personally enjoying it. Also, not even just to mention Stalker, what just happened there? I, I mean, listen, I'm definitely going to go ahead and jump into him whenever I can. Wait, that sounds awful. I'm definitely going to go and play Stalker if and when I can. Uh, but I'm definitely curious if we've got other characters that we, we can throw in there. Will we go and get Vor? Could we go and talk our enemies to death? I don't know. It's going to be very, very interesting. We and that, that entire area isn't even overly finished yet. We got the plants in there. And we were told about the plants a while ago and how we're going to be able to grow our own kind of things. I still don't even know what they're going to do. They've been very discreet about this. Um, so I'm interested about the plants. And then we obviously see the intrinsics. The intrinsics remind me of, uh, at least for the UI screen, remind you of the uh, the Railjack intrinsics, right? But these are essentially going to open up the RNG variants that you get when you're playing. So this is still going to be important to make sure that you want to select a particular tree that you feel like you'll benefit most from, whether it be like riding or combat. It's up to you. Do you want to explore? Do you want to get stuck in? Now, as we go and enter the Viri, my first impressions were absolutely breathtaking. You should have been able to see it on screen really quickly. Just, I was in shock. I was in awe. I know that sounds a bit silly, but the skybox. The skybox was the one thing that I just, I always thought it was going to be kind of gloomy and a bit gloomy and doomy because we're in this void-esque kind of area. Instead, it looks like paradise and we've been sent to heaven. So I don't know what happened there, but either way, the joyful moods, Keep in mind, because there are two different moods. There's angry and joyful. Oh, there might be more than different moods. Whether or not there's a Rouse mood, I have no idea. But the joyful moods of Dominus Frax was absolutely breathtaking. Complete, full credit and shout out towards the art team. And whoever came up with the idea of, you know, uh, atmospherically and environmentally changing the mood will also go and help us also get different feelings when we go in there. Again, refreshing. We do have this with open worlds, but this one with that skybox is going to be breathtaking. Then we go towards the combat. There isn't too much for me to go and say about the combat. It's melee centered. So, hey, at least it's not. So long as it's not Adarak spin to win, I'm okay. So it's going to be melee centered and it's going to be combinations that we've not really done before so it's a bit hard to go ahead and cover this right now for now i'm just going to say i'm interested and we can cover it more on launch moving from that in towards the fishing mini game that looked honestly quite cool it was very unique i'm definitely going to be curious about the cooldowns towards it is there going to be several locations that we can fish from because that's going to help the scenery and the change of pace and uh, when we are catching fish it looked like we caught more fish in that mini game if every fish is representative to an aspect ratio well, aspect ratio to a ratio of one to one so you catch one fish you get one fish back 
if it is representative to that, then that'd be interesting. I didn't see any fish collected in the screen after it, so I don't know. I think it might just be re rated on rewards at the top that you can see there. Um, so it seems like there's like an X amount of fish that you go and get, and then you get like one bonus, and you get an X amount of fish, and you get another bonus. Um, so that'll be kind of interesting as well. But overall, I think it's a cool, unique uh, fishing mini game, and I welcome it because I enjoy fishing within the game, so it doesn't bother me. <laughs> And we also saw the Undercroft as well. First of all, awesome transition going from, like I said, the paradise into the dark, gloomy-esque related area, drop it down into this giant portal, and then we're into our Warframes. That nice transition. Well, we were already in our Warframes, but we dropped through the portal, we're into our Warframes, and now it's Warframe gameplay. Very cool transition. I did really I did really welcome that. I have a slight concern with the whole it's survival, it's defense. I'm personally a, a little bit tired of survival and defense. I understand that it's not easy to make game modes within Warframe and it must be you know quite hard to come up with new ideas that that genuinely work. Um, I did like the mirror defense mission that came out recently, but at least it spices it up by saying, hey, you might start with survival and do five minutes, but then it goes defense next. Uh, again, there's a lot of, again, roguelike that they're doing here, RNG. So it, it is refreshing. And I think I would probably welcome this more than just going in and being like, hey, you do survival and you have to do it for like 30 minutes and it won't change. I, at least I welcome the change every five minutes or every five waves or whatever else it may be. And I'll be curious to go and see what other ones have got in there, but it seems to be targeting endurance. So could there be excavation? I don't know. That zone looked quite small, so I doubt it'd be an excavation. But what do you guys think about that one? Uh, there are also new enemies and I always welcome new enemies. So let's bring them on. I, I like to fight different things. We also have the incarnate system now the incarnate system for the evolutional uh weapons evolutional evolutional weapons the incarnate system for the evolution weapons were awesome the felux you know just to name a few like latum and so forth these were really really cool weapons so to go and see this system expand and to see that we can go and bring other weapons up to this system yes 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 very much yes I fully welcome this. The only thing that I do want to go ahead and welcome as well, which I don't believe is currently in the game, I don't think it is, unless they added it in and I wasn't aware of this, is um, I don't always want to go to Cavalero to change my system and my, my, my evolutions. If I'm in an arsenal, I welcome the option to change my options in there. Yes, to build the weapon and to, to get the weapon, go and to unlock the weapon and all of the um, evolutions go to Cavalero and gameplay, I get that. But once it's unlocked and once it's built and once it's good to go, I do hope that we can get it inside our arsenals where I can now select it in there. Even if it's like some kind of thing that I install within my like arsenal in, you know how like um, when you first do mods within the game or like the mod components or whatever you want to go and get to companions to like install some kind of segment, maybe something like that or like the helmet segment, you get the idea? Something like that we install into our arsenal and it's like an incarnate segment to allow us to flex on the fly. And personally, I would welcome that. I would so welcome that. So uh, let's go and see more of the Incarna system, please. And finally, I'm going to leave it on this one here because I'm sure I've covered a lot of notes and uh, I don't want the video to be too, too long by all means, but there is a lot to go and cover here. It's absolutely jam-packed, but the Oro Worm boss fight. There is so little to be said here. And yes, 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 yes. I'm very much looking forward to it. Inside Deimos, we had those big worms that you kind of saw them. I don't think they were actually, were they were Oro? I don't think they were Oro worms, were they? But they were worms, the day and night ones. And when we saw them kind of battle it out against each other, it wasn't really a big battle, but you get the idea. Um, it was very cool. I felt like there was a missed opportunity with, with big fights inside the game. I think most people enjoy Eidolon fights, for example, just due to the richness of the size of the opponent. And I welcome more bigger opponents and more things go and fight that just feel a bit more gigantic, especially in these open worlds, you know? Um, so Aura Worm boss fight, interesting, absolutely welcome it. And we can see that we're riding towards it in the sky. Um, you can see several like drifter related kind of um, drifter related um, uh, players on their uh, caves with their, their horseback riding towards it. Could it be a sky battle? Well, the Oro Worm, I don't, I don't think is going to grow legs and, you know, land on the surface and fight you down there. So it could be interesting if it's a sky battle. If it is, I definitely welcome it as well because it's very different. But um, how they handle that, I don't know, especially if Drifter is going to be centered around melee. Let's hope it's not like a melee battle, but 
um, I don't know. Either way, I want to know what your thoughts are. This was a wonderful dev stream. I'm glad that I caught it. I understand them pushing it further and further back, but I welcome all of the things that has been uh, lifted within this dev stream. There's so many other things going cover, the deluxe skins and the cosmetics and all of these other different things. But for now, this is my thoughts. Overall, thumbs up from me. I'm very much looking forward to the update and I hope I get to see you guys join me and join us as well in the update sometime in April. Not too sure when the date was, but sometime in April. So I will definitely see you guys then. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. What are your thoughts about everything? Please go and like the video, share, subscribe, anything that you guys can go and do to help. Thank you very much. I'll catch you guys again in the next video and I'll see you later.